with this video I intend to show you how you might make a very simple interconnection between a condensing cooker and a solid fuel stove in an open system configuration. The uh, connections on the unit will allow for many different systems but in this this is a particularly easy one to achieve. You'll see in a while that there are three connections on the left hand side as there are three connections on the right hand side defined as L1, L2, L3 and on the right R1, R2, R3. You have three connections on top. This would sometimes be used to as an additional zone or to uh, introduce a thermostat, an overall system thermostat if necessary. In this situation we're using this for an expansion and a cold feed but it can also be used as a primary circuit to heat a cylinder if necessary which is shown on a different video to this with this being the return. So if we carry on you'll see that in the inside of the unit beside the, behind the installation the manifold exact, uh, exists so it's a, a, a protected by one inch of insulation all around 25 millimeters of insulation all around brackets at the back simply screwed onto the wall with 25 millimeters of insulation uh, keeping it away from the surface of the wall so you see that inside we have a different chambers for example we have a flow chamber where heat arriving in on R1 or an L1 would collect at this point and then be pushed by the water entering along over the flow chamber down round and back through the bypass chamber if the bypass chamber is being used otherwise it would come down to here and go back into whatever is connected here as a return or here this would be the the top two chambers so basically act as one in that there are a full uh, uh, flow input and bypass so you'll see that when that is actually happening and heat is arriving into the area then all of this area will first of all fill with the warmest water coming in from whatever boiler was calling and therefore be made available for the zones zone one zone two zone three with return one return two return three this is just one example there are many different ways of using the energy zone unit so if heat is drawn away by any given zone say zone two and it arrives back in on its return port then of course the return port it will fill the uh, return chamber with uh, the coldest possible water this water so is what's perfectly a uh, required for a condensing boiler to condense or for say a heat pump to work properly so this unique opportunity provides the system uh, with an opportunity to have high temperature say from solid fuel stove delivering back to a high temperature solid fuel return and also taking the zone return and offering that primarily back to the condensing stove so it makes the creation of that system extremely simple as i'm sure you'll soon see if we now move on and we put in a, a stove on the right hand side with that situation we've already achieved a besides the fact that so far we haven't put any pump on the circuit we have a perfect primary circuit no obstruction flow arrives up through the flow pipe from into R1 turns back in itself passes the expansion point and the cold feed which are 75 mil apart in other words there's no pressure differential between the two of those so it does uh, no pitching in the system travels across here and back no obstruction whatsoever as it travels back it travels through the right hand cylinder coil domestic water coil this provides so the necessary heat leak for the stove which is a requirement for all stove installations and having delivered its heat it carries it back down to the stove again to be reheated if the stove output is not so great this would probably work away fine if you do need to introduce a pump on the stove then very simply this elbow could be removed and this elbow could be removed and then in that instance you could introduce an injector pump therefore you'd have a conventional T here and an injector T here with a non-return valve here if a thermostat detects that the return water is above 55 degrees is which typically is what stove manufacturers would require before any heat is drawn away to radiators or other zones before this pump comes into operation or any zone pump comes into operation 
then the same water that arrived to here that would be finding its way through the coil is now captured as well and pulled through the pump for the first time pushing open this non-return valve and opening this path as opposed to the primary circuit through the cylinder and then moves on down and into the injector T. At the injector T there's a principle called the Bernoulli principle comes into play. So Bernoulli principle would be that where high water at a high velocity is pushed through and then pushed through a restricted smaller tube or pipe as is shown inside in this T. Injector T's you can purchase, purchase them from the local merchant or you can actually make one if you look it's not a difficult concept. This injector travels just about halfway across the T. So you inject the water from the pump here. What that does in effect is cause high pressure inside that injector and as that opens out it needs it the pressure reduces. As the pressure reduces there's less pressure it actually causes a vacuum at this point. That vacuum will suck the water through the coil and down and suck this water in front of the injector and the injector then fires it down through and through the stove. So in other words we've increased the velocity of the system uh, substantially we're heating the water much much faster and we're delivering much more water through the stove which will take away the full heat capacity of the stove. So a, the system now so will show that we have a very simply stove connected to the energy zone. We have the a, through, from the energy zone down primary circuit through the cylinder and now we've introduced an injector pump which can uh, fire the water causing that circuit to work much much better. Because we now have um, a solid fuel in an open system we need to have an expansion tank and a cold feed. So the expansion tank and cold feed uh, would the tank would keep the system topped up with water uh, and the cold feed would drop down as far as possible before it rises back up to become the feed for the system. The reason for this heat lock loop is so that if any hot water is in the expansion or around here, it won't find an easy path to get back into the tank to heat the contents and cause that water to heat, which would evaporate and cause fresh water to be brought in. In the meantime, where the air is rising up through here, and if there's any chance that some water might be pitched over into the tank, as water might travel up with it uh, in a process of trying to uh, spill over into the tank, if at the higher any water goes in this pipe, it'll put pressure on this non-return valve. If that non-return valve has pressure, the gate will flap open, the water will flow through and back down again into the cold feed. So you get no pitching in this situation. This is particularly useful if you haven't enough room to get much height on the expansion above the heating tank, if there's some height restriction in the project that you're doing. So again, now you'll see the overall system is exactly the way it should be in where there is a primary circuit required particularly where a pump should be introduced in an indirect way giving hot, direct hot water uh, as a priority. If at any time we decide uh, to introduce another boiler and in this situation we say we are going to introduce the a condensing cooker. A condensing cooker needs the coldest water in the system in order to condense. So. This is the Stanley Brandon cooker and in this situation with, you know, for its internal mechanism requires that the return would be put into a higher port than the flow. So the pump would take the coldest water in the system which is coming back from the zones and push that water into the cooker, uh, be heated by the cooker but of course any condensate caused then will be at a maximum level because it's the coldest or coolest water in the system and the flow would come back out and go into L1. L1 delivers the high temperature water in and back around again. If it's not used, it's simply, it has an open path right back around to where it came from. And if it is being used, it goes away in the zones, comes back in, and the coldest water is put back down to, to the cooker situation. So let's have a quick look and see how the cooker actually works. Uh, pipe work, how it works. What we have so is the pump on the return connection, which in this situation is at a higher point than the flow, goes through, create the combustion process creates condensation and that condensation should be conducted in plastic pipe away from the cooker. 
very important to follow manufacturer's instructions, especially with any unit as powerful as this cooker or any uh, oil burning or gas burning situation. And particularly when condensation is involved, it's so easy to do it right and it's so, it can cause so much hassle when it's done wrong. The instructions are so important to follow. So again we can see the overall system is now heat input wise, very simple. Flow and return from the left hand side from the cooker, coldest on the bottom, flow and return from the stove on the right hand side, but we're using the warmer return, which is what the stove manufacturer would require. We now see, because we now have a cylinder that might, uh, if the stove is not lighting, we might still want to heat it with the cooker. For that reason, we would use one of the zones on the right hand side to introduce an extra pump into the system, into the second coil in the cylinder. Whether you use an energy zone or not, it's always a good idea for the connection point to a cylinder to be a non-return valve. The reason being, if heat is introduced in, it won't drift back out and, and lose its heat contents in the pipework. Uh, pipework will act as a radiator. So it just keeps the hot water hotter much, much longer when you prevent it coming out. Of course, you can't use non-return valve on a primary circuit. And for that reason, it's critical that not just as the manifold is insulated so well, but that all of the primary pipework should be insulated, densely insulated, particularly at a high level. The better the insulation, the better the system is. A critical factor about insulation people don't realize is sometimes a person might calculate the amount of heat loss from pipework as just what might pass through the wall of the pipe, but it isn't. Because the water has to be reheated, the amount of fuel that's needed to get the water back up to that temperature, including the heat loss from the flue and the heating of the stove itself and all that metal, all adds to the amount of huge amount of energy that's wasted because of uh, not proper consideration putting it into the quality of workmanship or the quality of the insulation on the transmission pipework. It is ultimately one of the most energy effective decisions to make to spend time to insulate that pipework extremely well. So now, now we have our boilers connected, we can introduce zones. For example, if we put in a radiator zone, I know very simply what we would have is a pump from this connection, the left hand connection, which connects onto the top chamber, pulls the hottest water down around our radiator circuit, back around again, and the return water passing through a non-return valve is collected in the return chamber. The reason for the non-return valve is if this zone is not working, we don't want to take a chance of any drifted heat maybe finding its way into this path if any of those reds raise to a higher level. Because the radiator at a high level that's heated, when it starts to cool, will cause cold water to fall down and that in turn would cause water to uh, rise up here, which may cause a circuit. So the non-return valve here is an insurance policy, let's say, to ensure that the, this zone will only work when that pump works. If we now want to move on to say an underflow heating circuit we could simply put in uh, the circuit uh, in this fashion where we again take our hottest water down and into a mixing a temperature mixing valve the mixing valve so would allow for whatever temperature is necessary to be circulated if the underflow pump is working it will be pushing let's say 35 degree water around the floor and heating the floor to whatever the manufacturer's design would say it should be. But if the water on the floor starts to lose too much heat and starts to get cold, the mixing valve will start to operate and will open this port and close the bypass port. Now this pump will start to pull hot water down, mixed with some of the return water, and again get the temperature level to the perfect height, which should be monitored on a gauge at the manifold. Any cold water coming back from the underfloor system, of course, will go back up and be, again, the coldest water that would go back to the condensing cooker, making that cooker work all the better again. So a very, very effective way of maximizing the energy of the cooker is to use a situation where, like this, where the coldest water is always introduced in here. Now, now we can see that the full system uh, is, uh, again quite simple to comprehend we have the open expansion and cold feed we have the energy zone unit in this situation is energy zone 3 because there are three zones potentially being underneath one two three and we have the condensing cooker operating to its manufacturer's highest best spec specification 
the radiator circuit can carry whatever reds are carable, carable using this pump's uh, power and whatever pipe sizing you've introduced. The underflow system, simple flow and return, standard configuration and the cooker has a primary circuit, primary coil. Very, very simple. Now, again, if you look at the energy zone, you'll see that the energy zone so has given us this cold chamber which is the optimum way of dealing with the delivering water back to the uh, coal assist or coal assist, uh, appliance and also you'll see where the water flows through any water traveling in that system will always be if it comes from here or here will always travel along because this area in here is so many times bigger than the pipe delivering the air will start to collect here and it'll be trapped in this configuration and directed out and up out of the expansion so every time water passes through the system the unit deaerates that water so there's no air in the system it solves uh, uh, the problem of of airlocks and radiators or whatever it's continually venting the system so um, hopefully you will have uh, enjoyed this and, and gained some information if we can be of any more help please contact us energy awareness uh, our staff are uh, trained to give not just a uh, heating design um, support but also to look at the control systems and to help you design the control system or to provide you with control systems whatever configuration you decide is necessary you can see just before I leave these are the fastening points at the back of the unit so please contact us if we can help in any way thank you